pubs. He's part of Levantine's pub and club network. Lawrence, we've all seen it, haven't we? We've seen the person swaying up to the bar, propping on the bar to try and get the money out of their wallet, dropping it on the floor, quite often putting their head in their hands, finally managing to ask for a drink and then getting one. It's not an uncommon sight. I beg to differ there. It is an uncommon sight. I can't believe people are saying that. You know, if you well, come down to Levin, you... No, no. no I, well, I, I can't deny facts and figures. I haven't seen, it on, you know, uh, the proof of that. But it's certainly not the case in Levin, you. Certainly not at all. But you would say, if I went to Levin, this Friday night, walked yeah. up and down into the bar of Levin, I wouldn't see anybody drunk getting served at all. You may see somebody drunk, but they wouldn't be getting served. They'd be asked to leave and would refuse to serve them. Isn't this a bit naive, Lawrence? Let's, let's be honest with each other here. And isn't it a bit dangerous to make that claim? And is it not a bit naive to say it just doesn't go on? Well, the, the way you're describing it, or the, the chap that's just been on describing it, and it's widespread, it, it totally isn't. And, and that's just a fact of life. So I'm, where does the I'm problem not... exist then? It, let's say Levenstein doesn't have this problem. Where in the northwest does? Because this research was carried out right here in the northwest. Well, it sounds as though he's, he's referring to city centre bars, where don't have as much control um, of that. And, and the accusation of uh, bar staff saying that you know oh, we have to serve them because we get the sack. I, I don't think that is the case. Uh, I don't know of any company or bar company. Uh, that would Why is it happening then? Because it's happening. They've got they've got photographic, they've got video evidence, they've got audio evidence. It's happened. We can't dispute that because they've got the evidence. So is this just a complete fluke that on that one day the bars they went into for the no, first time ever this happened no, that it's never going to happen again? Hey, hang on. You're asking me an opinion from, from our folks in Levenshoom and I'm giving you an honest opinion. I can't speak for city centre bars that have are carrying out those operations. You know, the so why, what's different, do you think, Lawrence? Because I'm interested here. What's well, the we're difference in, we're, between... We're running community pubs. Um, we only have one late night venue. Uh, so the but, small community pubs, and, and we know uh, the, a lot of the people that come in, and we can tell we've got experience in... You know, you, you say a drunk person, you know, somebody can be in all night or all day, and by the time, you know, late at night comes, they, they may have got drunk. Well, it's not a case you just drag them out and leave them lying on the street. You know, you've got a responsibility. If they've come to, come to the time of night where they've had too much to drink, well, it's our responsibility. We, we'd usually get the local taxi firm and um, get a taxi firm and send them home. You know, and when when you say, uh, sometimes we've had it in, in the past, somebody can be asking to get served, but it would have clearly drunk. Now, it can get violent, and it's how you actually uh, refuse them uh, being served. You know, it's not it's not an easy game in, in the pub industry, you know, and it's not... So why, Lawrence, I, I understand this isn't your patch, but you are a very, very experienced publican. You know a lot of people, you know a lot of uh, bar owners and bar staff and the like. Why do some bartenders serve very drunk people? Because they know no better. Don't they know the law? Do you think there's not enough training going on? There's in not, some, some, there's some bars place? there wouldn't be enough training yet. You know, okay. uh, we, had, right. we had training in Levenshoom about three years ago uh, with the local police and the pub watch network. Uh, on the first occasion, um, one, one of my bar staff, who was a personal license holder, refused a person to be served. You know, because he was clearly drunk. He'd come in off the street, uh, and she, she, she fired. At, he actually threw an empty glass from the bar at the back of the bar, closely missing, missing her. She was adamant he wasn't getting served. Okay, luckily I was there myself, and off he went. Where's the follow-up? The follow-up is the key. A lot of bar persons think, well. They can refuse someone, but, you know, it's the crux of a violent customer asking for a drink and they'll take a stand and what will happen? Will they get support from the police and the authorities and the NHS? You know, we're totally missing the point with alcohol. 
you know, do we go in and ask the, uh, the supermarkets who are selling lost leaders, you know, to people that preload and will drink and then try and go into a pub, which were clearly drunk by the time they come out of the house, you know, and that's our job to say, no, I'm sorry, okay. you can't yeah, come well, in. Yeah, well, I mean, as you know, Lawrence, we have had that discussion right here on this programme before, actually, it's a good point you made. Thank you very much, there's yeah. a... Lawrence okay. Hennigan from Thank the Levantine Pub and Club Network. He made a bold claim then. Thanks very much for your time, Lawrence. Thank you. Very good, Eleven. Thank you, Bob.